what role do you see empathy having played in, in the origin of, of our species, in, in the evolution of hominids, and, and ultimately in Homo sapiens? Um, are we just sort of carrying over just a basic chimpanzee type empathy, and, and that's what we've got, or has it, has it changed in particular ways? Yeah, I think this perspective taking part, we are particularly good at. So I think the emotional part of empathy, I don't think that a human is necessarily more, more empathic than a dog. Hmm. And, and many dog owners claim that their animals are actually more empathic than they are. Um, so so I, I don't think the emotional part, we are that different. But we, are, we have a better developed capacity to take the perspective of somebody else. So that, so that even if you read a, a novel, let, let's say War and Peace, you can identify with a character in the novel and, and look at the, that, that's how novels are, are built, otherwise we wouldn't be reading them. If we wouldn't be empathizing, it would be absolutely not interesting, those novels. But we, we identify with certain characters, and, we, and so that's how we get in, drawn into the story. And, and that sort, sort of perspective taking, even on very abstract sort of information, like uh, the written word, is possible for us. I mean, do you think that language made that possible, or do you think that before language, we were able to take these really powerful perspective taking. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what language adds, except that it allows us to explain these things. Mm. But, but I'm not sure that language is the source of that kind of phenomena. Mm -hmm. It's often confused for that. I'm, I'm a biologist who lives in a psychology department. And psychologists, they, they tend to think like that. I'm always a bit puzzled by that. They said. Well, it must be our language capacity that makes <laughs> us think how others think and stuff like that. But I'm not convinced of that at all. I think we're very good post -ho at post hoc explainers of things. Mm -hmm. uh, we're very good at that. But, but the, the immediate decisions of empathy are bodily decisions. So, for example, there's a Swede named Dimberg. He, he told me his life story. It was an interesting story because he's a scientist who was the first to demonstrate that our empathic reactions are quicker than, than we are aware of. And there was an enormous resistance to this because at the time, this was in, in the early 90s, everyone assumed that empathy is something we decide to be. I, I look mm -hmm. at your situation and I decide to be empathic or not empathic. And what Dimberg showed is that we are involuntarily empathic. And so the way he showed it is he would flash faces on the computer screen with a facial expression, let's say frowning faces or smiling faces. And people would mimic these faces in their own faces, uh, unconsciously. Uh, he had electrodes on their, on, their, on their face so that he could measure the muscle movements. Uh, now, by itself, this, this is no proof of anything. Uh, it could be mimicry, uh, voluntary mimicry. But then he did an experiment where he flashed the faces so briefly that you're not aware of them, so subliminally. So then afterwards, he would ask these people, how do you feel? And people who had seen smiley faces, they had been mimicking them in their face and they would feel well, and people had seen, looked at their frowning faces, they would feel very poorly, and they had been mimicking these faces. And so he concluded that we don't decide to be empathic, we're automatically and voluntarily empathic, and we adopt the mood that is transmitted to us, um, even if we're not aware that we saw these faces. And uh, he got into a lot of trouble because this was absolutely not the view that people had of empathy, but it's exactly the view that mm -hmm. I have, is that empathy is an, an involuntary bodily connection, and that's where it starts.